Okay, it's been a pretty crazy week for me. I've been wanting to film for the last couple of days, but I'll get all into that. My name is Amanda, and this is a vlog of my late autism and ADHD diagnosis. And I realized I didn't pull out a fidget today. Um, I need to clean out my fidget drawer. In the end of the last video, I was telling y'all about my new favorite one, but I can't use this one on video because it would really be annoying. Um, but this one from Specs, not sponsored, is also a favorite. It's a magnet. It's got a needle, a sewing needle <laughs> stuck to it. I need to put that in a somewhere safe. Anyway, um, so yes, vlog of my late autism and ADHD diagnosis. If you're new here, I also want to show you my shirt. It says, please um, be patient with me. I'm from the 1900s. <laughs> When I saw this shirt, I just had to buy it. Oh, and then I put the little muffle thing on my mic. Just, I wanted to try that out today and see if it, how it affected the sound quality. Um, but I pretty much always do my videos in one take unless I have a tech problem, which makes me have to film again, like the time that I forgot to turn my mic on and filmed an entire silent video so of course i had to redo that one but um to keep things like i said my disclaimer pretty much as natural as i can to the autistic experience experience um my vlog is um stream of consciousness for the most part like sometimes i put some bullet points out and things like that so um it's been a pretty crazy week I sometimes I'm like when it rains it pours as far as social things so one of the diagnostic criteria for being autistic is social what they call social deficits I like to say social differences because I don't feel that it is a deficit to be autistic but autistic people definitely socialize differently than allistic which is non-autistic people and so in the past, and I still like struggle with this, but in the past, part of my mask was just people pleasing. And also because I didn't get invited to things very often. If somebody invited me to something, I always said yes, because I didn't know when the next time I might get invited to something was. And I'm actually a very extroverted autistic person. Um, one of the reasons why I personally didn't think I could be autistic for many years, because I suspected it um, a long time ago, was because of the harmful stereotype that autistic people either don't want to have friends or they're all introverted, um, which is so untrue because I am very extroverted. <laughs> but despite being extroverted, I still struggle with friends. And as you can see in like lots of videos I post where I talk about um, how I struggle with friendships. Um, it is one, there's a difference between autistic traits that like common autistic traits that people share and the diagnostic criteria and social deficits again, um, is, is part of the criteria and definitely, um, it shows up over and over in my life. What I like to say when it rains, it pours because, um, I can go like, a couple of weeks with nothing like no social like okay where are my friends like everybody is off the radar I try to call people everyone's busy and so it's like okay whatever and then all of a sudden it's like I'll have a week where it's just non-stop and what I'm trying to learn now is to um pay attention to my nervous system and not over schedule because like i said in the past it's like i would just say yes 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 and deal with the fallout um back then i didn't understand why i would get so exhausted um now i do because like if our nervous systems are overstimulated that much then we're going to pay for it we're going to hit burnout we're going to hit like um a crash right so um this last and some of the social things that I had this last week were also um, had some anxiety things around them, which I'm going to talk a little bit about and how I decided to deal with each one of these anxieties. So the first one was a friend of mine who has like 
um, like a private river access. I live in the Pacific Northwest. We have amazing rivers up here that um, people like to swim in very cold water, but swim or um, I just like to wade in the water because uh, it's too cold for me. But I, I, it's one of my favorite things to do up here in the Pacific Northwest is wade in the rivers and just listen to the sound of the water but I hate crowds. So, you know, it's a really struggle to find a river spot that isn't super crowded in the summer. Well, she's got private um, river access and I've been really wanting her to invite me to her river spot, but um, just timing wise, it, you know, hadn't worked out. Well, she finally invited me and so I was really excited. And then all of a sudden, because it's not, um, developed land. It doesn't really have a Google address per se. Like she could get me to Google to a certain part. And then it was like a big, huge long list of verbal instructions of how to get there the rest of the way. And I'm like, mm, yikes. Uh, because one, I don't do very well with verbal directions. I also have a Fantasia. I can't visualize. Um, I wasn't sure if my GPS would work there. Um, I did try to look at it, Google maps and Google earth and like zoom in and try to see what she was talking about. And I'm like, I was so worried <laughs> I was going to get lost, um, that it was really making me anxious. And I almost was like, I don't want to go, but cause I also don't really like carpooling with people because I want control of when I'm going to leave. Like I, you know, I don't want to be stuck somewhere and get overwhelmed or something, but this is a friend who's also a autistic. I knew she would understand. And I did want to go. I've been wanting to go to the river with her for a while. So I asked her, you know, how long she was planning on being there. And she said only a couple hours. And I was like, okay, I can, I can plan for that. So then I asked her if I could carpool with her. It ended up being more driving for me because her house was a little bit out of the way, but not enough for her to pick me up. I don't know, it just didn't work out. I had to drive to her house and then we drove to the river. Um, so we ended up having a blast. It was, it was, it was so great. I'm glad I went. I'm glad, um, that I ended up driving with her. It gave me more visiting time too, which, you know, again, I'm extroverted. So I like to talk to people. Um, so that was really fun. But the night before, while I was like trying to figure all this out in my head, um, I was really anxious and it did affect my sleep. Then uh, the next day, I had plans to go to a friend's house and watch a Doctor Who. Um, she'd seen a couple episodes, but she'd never really gotten into Doctor Who, but she really wanted to give it a try. And so we planned like a little mini like binge watching thing to watch um, the first several to get her started in it. And so my plan was to be there for a good chunk of the day. Um, and again, I was like, okay, well, how is food gonna work? Because if I'm gonna be gone that many hours, I need to make sure that I have foods that I can eat. I'm not um, like as sensitive to food as a lot of autistic people. I have a very wide um, palate. A lot of autistic people have very narrow palates or sensory issues with foods. Um, mine's I'm more of a sensory seeker with food unless I am overstimulated, but still, you know, it was something that my brain latched on to being anxious about. Um, so I asked her what she was planning or should I bring something? And um, she's like, we're gonna do like a charcuterie board. And I was like, oh, that's awesome, I love that. So, and then I brought some stuff to add to it and we had a really good time. And even though, again, I'm super extroverted and I loved it. It was so much fun. We were there for like, I don't know how many hours. I was there for many, many hours. We ended up watching four episodes plus lots of visiting. That much, and especially that much TV, which I'm not, I don't watch much TV. Um, it just was so stimulating. Like it was fun. I'm glad I did it. I loved it. Zero regrets. I really should have had like a recovery day on Monday. And for the most part, Monday wasn't too bad. Like I, the morning I was able to chill out, but I had another social engagement Monday night. And again, like I tell y'all, like I can go so long with nothing 
And then all of a sudden, it's like everything happens all at once. And I didn't want to say no to any of these. Like the summer's coming to an end. I didn't want to reschedule the river with my friend. Like I've been trying to get out there all summer with her. It finally lined up where our schedules. I didn't want to say no. And then I'll get to the uh, Doctor Who friend in a minute too. Um, but the reason why like that worked. So on Monday night, my book club was having a birthday party instead of one of our regular meetings. It was a birthday party for um, one of the members. And again, I was super excited, um, really wanted to go, but I had some more anxiety stuff. Um, I'm gonna have to pause because I just noticed my battery is almost dead. Okay, it's now, I think, about four, four and a half hours later. So um, I haven't had technical issues in a long time. So of course, when I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was gonna have tech issues. Um, I just learned something new about my camera. Apparently, if you try to plug it in and film while you're plugging, um, it looks like you're recording and you are, you're recording video, but it turned off my microphone. So that was really annoying. So here I am, I'm gonna try to recapture what I, where I left off. Okay, so um, I was, I left off trying to explain how I was handling different things that came up for me um, regarding anxiety and some social events. So again, I was mentioning that my book club had a party and again, I was really looking forward to going to it, but I was also, I mean, so incredibly anxious about it that I didn't sleep well. I actually had to take one of my um, anxiety medications to get to sleep that night. And I had convinced myself, I think it was the only way I could fall asleep. Like, it's okay, Amanda, this is too stressful. You can go ahead and cancel tomorrow. You don't have to go. And um, I was able to fall asleep. And then after a good night's sleep, I reapproached it and I was like, okay, what am I anxious about? Again, I was anxious about getting lost and I was anxious about parking uh, because she said, you know, if you can carpool, there's limited parking up near my house, so please do that. And again, I like to be in control, so I don't like carpooling, but I went ahead and um, reached out. I don't like relying on other people. It's a trauma response. I've always had to just rely on myself, um, but I asked somebody if they would uh, take me up up the mountain. She looks, it's actually like a hill. Um, I came from Texas where everything was flat, so even a big hill to me is a mountain. But <laughs> anyway, very, very, very windy road. She, gorgeous, gorgeous views where um, she lives. And we had a blast. Um, and like I said, this one, this was my book club, but we were celebrating a birthday. Somebody brought really cute Kamala cookies. I'm gonna post them up here and show you. Um, I did get really irritated that the cookie person, uh, she bought these from a bakery. Um, she did apostrophe law instead of Kamala, but minus that they are so cute cookies I was I was very excited and it's also really nice to be part of a group that you know aligns with my views um, it's a very very welcoming group and I'm just I felt like the sense of community being there at this birthday party and so in the end I'm very glad that I took time instead of just like oh I'm too anxious to go I took time to figure out why I was anxious and how could I accommodate myself? And I decided once again that the worry of getting lost and parking was more anxious for me than relying on a ride. Um, I could see if both were probably too big of anxieties. Um, you know, a third option, if it was affordable for somebody, it would be able to just hire an uber you know um so there are ways to be able to go to things um and look at ways to accommodate now of course you know the uber does cost more money so that unfortunately i call that the disability tax um it cost disabled people more money to exist 
than it does for an abled bodied person. Um, for an able bodied person, using an Uber might be just convenience, or maybe they wanted to drink alcohol um, and they don't want to have to worry about that. They're not hiring the Uber as an accommodation, like it is something that is an extra. Um, but for some autistic people um, or otherwise disabled, you know, the anxiety that some of us have is disabling. It does keep us from participating in life. But like I said, if you can like break it down, figure out what is causing the anxiety and finding if there's ways to accommodate it, then, um, you know, that made it where I didn't have to miss out on something that ended up being a really, really amazing night. Um, and again, driving with an, another member of my book club ended up being really good. And I'm glad that I, you know, allowed myself to ask for help, which is something that is not easy for me to do. Um, okay. So then the next day on Shiro's day, there was going to be another book club event. And at that point I was like, I, I knew that I needed a day off. Like I, I, doing too much and I haven't had recovery time. My husband was also out of town um, for a couple of days. So that also threw off my routine. My kids are in driver's ed. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm socializing more than like what is my norm. Plus, you know, doing all the other mom and wife and life things. So this week was just so busy. Mm, I love kombucha. Okay. So I went ahead and said no to Tuesday and I did feel kind of sad. Like so we're on a big message board and they posted pictures and it's like, Oh, I missed out, but it's okay. There are going to be more things in the future. Um, I have to take time to balance my life. Like what things can I say yes to? And what things do I need to say no to? And what things am I saying no to out of anxiety or fear versus, okay, no, I really need to take care of my nervous system. And there's like a difference there, right? So I didn't do anything um, social. <laughs> I did do mom and other stuff, you know, things on Tuesday, but I opted out of the social so that I would have that evening to recuperate. And I'm glad I did because on Wednesday, I like, all sometimes it was a delayed response and all of that just came crashing down on me on Wednesday. And if I'd gone on Tuesday, I don't know, I might've been even worse. Maybe not. I don't know. Cannot tell. Um, but I've made a couple videos about RSD lately, rejection, sensitive dysphoria. <laughs> Kombucha's making me, uh, <laughs> anyway. RSD, rejection, sensitive dysphoria. And on Wednesday, I had a big wave of RSD hit me and it wasn't logical, made no sense. Um, it wasn't that anything anybody did. It was just a re response from past traumas. Again, a lot of pretty much every single late uh, um, diagnosed autistic woman that I've met has also been diagnosed with CPTSD because it's just traumatizing to grow up undiagnosed. And <clears throat> along with the lifelong friendship struggles, it has CPTSD around friendships or it, I do <laughs> distancing myself from it. Um, and so the friend that I hung out with on Sunday, um, to watch Dr. Who, uh, about a month, month and a half ago, she told me she is moving away and I've been sad about it ever since. Like I'm very, two things can be true at once. I'm very, very extremely happy for her. It's a really good opportunity. I am excited that she has this opportunity to move to Seattle and it's going to be what's best for her life. 
And at the same time, I'm extremely sad because this is the first friend that I've had in a very long time that I've just like clicked so quickly with. I've done this in my life a couple of times. Um, the last time was with this lady and when we met at a homeschool group and we just clicked and it felt like we were instant best friends. Um, I it wasn't really best friends. I've never actually, I don't think had a best friend because of reciprocity. Like I will often feel stronger towards the other person and find out that they don't um, reciprocate the same level of feelings, um, which again is an autism problem. But at that time, I felt really close to this person until we had a huge misunderstanding and it was before I was diagnosed autistic and I missed a bunch of social cues and I didn't know to even look out for the fact that I might be missing social cues um, without having a diagnosis. You can't take responsibility for, you know, things like that um, to be able to work through them. And I was just left completely confused, like what happened? Um, so that friendship ended with a bang and another time where I hit it off with a friend and um, it was right when I moved to Vancouver about 11 years ago. Um, she was a mom of triplet boys that were about a year younger than my twins. And we, again, hit it off really well. We were spending the entire summer together. We went to the river, we went to the museums, we were hanging out at parks, we were hanging out at each other's houses. Like, it just felt really comfortable. Like I felt like she got me being a twin mom and then her being a triplet mom. Um, and then all of a sudden she got really distant, like ghosted me and I was like, what the heck? Well, found out that <clears throat> she ended up, was gonna move away, but she um, got nervous to tell me. And so instead she just ghosted me for a while and I was like, finally I approached her and I'm like, what, what did I do? And she's like, you didn't do anything. I'm moving away and I didn't want it, you to be sad. And I'm like, okay, I get that, but um, still gonna be sad. <laughs> So that friendship, we're still friends on Facebook, but um, that friendship over time just fizzled out. It was really hard, you know, to maintain a long distance friendship because we'd only known each other for, again, a few months before she actually had to move away. It was just like a fast, quick friendship. And so this current friend too, I met just a couple months ago and we became fast and furious friends, but now she's moving away. So it's triggering the CPTS response, the trauma response of friends who've either um, moved away or these close friendships that I've had that burned so bright and then fizzled so fast. And I'm in a different place than I was back then. Like I'm now, um, I am diagnosed autistic and ADHD. I'm unmasked. I'm communicating differently in my friendships. Um, I've been able to talk to her about some of this. She still wants to be friends. She still has family that lives here in Vancouver. She has family that lives in Seattle. She, even though she lives here in Vancouver, she's traveling up to Seattle all the time to see family. And I'm pretty darn sure that's gonna be the same, that when she's up in Seattle, she's gonna be coming back down to Vancouver quite often to see family. And so I may see her almost about the same amount of time, but, um, my brain is not focusing on that. It's focusing on what happened to me in the past. And um, on Wednesday, I just got, my brain just like grabbed onto that sadness and it was like spiraling, pulling me down. It was really rough. And um, what I was feeling like, so I have a good analogy. Um, I feel like RSD, once you're able to start to recognize what happens when you're feeling rejection, and again, it's not anything she's done. It's just my brain is feeling rejection from the past, CPSD, the past traumas, not what's actually happening right now in the future. <laughs> but it still feels like she's rejecting me by moving when it has nothing to do with me. <sighs> I know this logically, but that doesn't, tell you know your like amygdala that just wants to be safe and loved and you know all of that but so recognizing it helps but just like having a sprained ankle you recognize you sprained your ankle you wrap it up in bandages and you baby it for a while but it's still gonna hurt until it heals 
RSD is the same. Like when you recognize it, you can wrap yourself in TLC, tender loving care, but it's still gonna hurt until it heals. Um, and maybe it'll heal faster than a sprained ankle, but that's just like a kind of a good analogy. Um, and one thing that helps me to help heal it is to um, either journal, do a vlog, um, talk about it with somebody that isn't the person um, because that sometimes can backfire on me uh, because again, my RSD has nothing to do with them. It has to do with me. My cat is wanting in now. No, no, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here. My cat is wanting my seat, look. Oh, okay, you're gonna be on camera. Magic, please, okay. This morning, I swear, I was so excited. I was able to film an entire video with no cats, dogs, delivery, or kids interrupting me, and then the sound goes out. <sighs> okay. <sighs> so frustrating. When you have ADHD, it's like so hard to stay on topic, and then interruptions do not help. Um, <clears throat> but this is a life. This is life. So being able to recognize the RSD really helps. Um, okay, hold on. Taking time, recovering, talking. Oh yeah. So one of the things that I noticed was that I was feeling sad, um, but how that was wanting to show up in the world was I was wanting to like delete certain social media, like unfriend people, like they can't hurt me if I remove myself. Um, I wanted to basically just like sit in my closet and hide away from the world. I had a therapy assess, um, appointment for on Thursday. Again, this was on Wednesday, it was happening. And I wanted to cancel that therapy appointment. Um, basically anything that would be good for me, no. And I was like, no, feel my feelings, acknowledge them, realize it has nothing to do with my friend, has to do with things that happened in the past. I can't tell the future and keep my therapy session, which I did. And we talked about this and we cried. Crying really helped. And I was feeling a lot better after my therapy session. And I don't know how the future will go with this friend. I hope we'll be able to maintain our friendship. She has indicated she wants to. I've indicated I want to. I think if we're both working at it, hopefully that will be good. And if not, I know that I'm capable of making more friends. <laughs> I'm really good at making friends. It's the hard part is maintaining and keeping them. But one step at a time, one step at a time. Um, so yeah, yesterday was really hard. The last thing, no, today's Friday, so that was Wednesday. Thursday got help, whew. Oh yeah, I was going to mention that, um, you know, therapy, I'm privileged to be able to go to therapy. I hate that in the US, therapy is a privilege. A lot of times you will run into people online and they'll suggest you need to go to therapy. Well, people need to realize that therapy is a privilege in the US. Some insurances, insurances don't pay for it at all. Some of them only pay for 10 sessions a year, which is ridiculous because sometimes it takes like two or three to find the right therapist. And then it takes another four or five to like actually get to know that therapist. And then, you know, 10 sessions, it's not going to be enough. Um, so I'm very lucky and thankful that I have access to therapy. I really wish that more people had access to therapy. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, but talk therapy definitely helps for me. And there are different types of therapy. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is give an update on my book. It just came back from the editor on Wednesday, uh, which also was really a thing because my book came back and I know that there's going to be a lot of edits because I mean, I am not very good at grammar. That's not my strongest suit. Like I, I know my story is good. I knew I needed to hire an editor because I knew my story was good, but my grammar's not. So I know when I open it, there's going to be a lot of 
a lot of corrections. And yesterday, I, I mean, Wednesday, I knew I was not in a good mental space to open that file. So I didn't, and I haven't had time. Yesterday was a very busy day. So today my goal is to open that file. Um, I wanna say thank you to everybody who has been encouraging me whenever I've posted about the book. I started writing it the mid-December last year in 2023, and um, I hope to have it published in a couple of months. I've got a few steps left. I've gotta approve all these edits and go over it and get a cover design format the inside of the book, get it copyrighted, learn how to upload it someplace. I don't know. I'm, I'm self-publishing and I'm learning as I go. Um, but for those of you who are new, my book, I wanted a queer and disability affirming story. So it's a rom-com. It's very lighthearted, very fun. Um, but it's about an autistic ADHD librarian who meets a vampire on TikTok and her best friend has dissociative identity disorder. And so it's very much a character developed story where it's all about the characters that I hope you fall in love with as much as I did as I was writing them. And your encouragement along the way has <laughs> helped me going, keep going. Cause um, every time I post about it, I've had a couple of comments where people saying, oh, that sounds like a really interesting book. I would definitely read it. And knowing that I have potential readers when I hit publish <laughs> has definitely helped keep me going. Um, it's a very different feeling than publishing to YouTube. Um, I don't know why. I think it's because it takes so much more work to put out a, a book, a full, huge like novel than it does a YouTube video. I'm not saying that this is easy. Before I started YouTube, I thought that YouTubers had a like, oh my gosh, how easy, <laughs> how I could be so further from the truth. Being a YouTuber is not easy. I love it. It's not easy. Um, what is amazing is having the community um, that I have gathered here on my channel and knowing that when I push publish on my videos, that I'm getting comments um, that are supportive and like, or questions more about things that I'm saying that further the dialogue. My comment section is one of the best places on YouTube, I think, personally. And I do try to answer, I read all the comments. I've gotten to a point where I can't answer them all, but I do my best. Anyway, until the next video, guys, <laughs> thanks.